been following a war. You have no moral values. I don't expect you to get money out of me for no reason. A war between motorists, the parking industry, and so-called cowboy clampers. Listen, you're there. getting 70 pounds cold. It's every driver's nightmare, getting back to your car and discovering that a big, bright yellow clamp has been slapped on it. It's even worse if the car isn't here because it's been towed away. I know, because it's happened to me. But in April, new regulations were introduced dealing with these methods of enforcing on-street parking laws. But how much has really changed? The new regulations change the picture for on-street parking. For most councils, the days of clamp first, ask questions later, seem to be disappearing. But what about all those rows over off-street parking on private land? Has the government really got tough on cowboy clampers and the causes of cowboy clamping? Madam Speaker, we have issued a white paper on the private security industry and proposing it to establish a private security industry authority. This would require wheel clampers to be licensed and establish a mechanism whereby wheel clamping firms could be subject to statutory regulations or codes of practice. Four years later, the legislation came to fruition with the Security Industry Authority being set up, requiring all clampers to be licensed. To get an idea of the challenge they faced, I look back over 10 years of ITV investigations, starting with the Salvation Army couple caught by the clampers in 1997. And I said, I want the clamp off. He said, no way until you pay me £60. I said, well, I'm disabled. I said, I can't go anywhere without the car. He said, I don't care if you're disabled, you're in a wheelchair or what. He said, you can walk up the road to your bank and get the money. He said, I want it now before you lease it. They have obviously discovered the loophole in the law that there is no legislation to cover car clamping. Back then, it wasn't illegal. Today, disabled badge holders are supposed to be exempt from the clampers and towers under the new Security Industry Authority licensing rules. But just how effective is this rule? Mike Flackett returned to his car with its disabled badge on display after a short visit to the bank in February. Came round here to pick my car up and as I come round the corner there was this massive bit of old metal on the front wheel. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, no, my car. And as I come up to it, the, this guy got out of a little white van and was parked there mm -hmm. and said, uh, it's going to cost you 94 quid, mate, get that off. I says, oh. I says, either that or I'll tell you to wait and it'll cost you another 100 quid on top of that, forget it back. Mike suffers from emphysema and has trouble walking any distances. The reason his car is so valuable to him and why he parked in this spot near the bank. I wrong Len up at work to tell her what had happened. Drew the money out of the bank, come back, paid him, and he was taking the clamp off as Link come round the corner shouting, don't give him any money. <laughs> I said, Mike, don't pay him. You haven't got to pay him. You've got a blue badge, he can't clamp you. And by the time I'd said that, he was in the van and gone. And he says, I just want my car, I want my car. Another one of the Security Industry Authority guidelines is that emergency vehicles in use should not be clamped. We showed the need for this piece of legislation back in 2000 when we tested out the stories about a particularly enthusiastic clamper. We sent an ambulance onto his patch, switched on our hidden cameras and sat back to see what he would do. The story is that two paramedics are taking a quick break. Sure, there's a warning sign, but would he really immobilise an ambulance? Uh, yes. Mr. Winston is out of the traps like a greyhound. Within seconds of seeing the vehicle, the clamp is out and on and no amount of arguing is going to persuade him to take it off. Are you to do with this? Yeah, I've done that. I'm about to leave the private land. It's 45 pounds. Aye. Feet. We've got... Well, look, we've just come off blink and dropping someone off. Yeah. We've nipped here for a quick meal break, dashed up there, grabbed it from the local shop and dashed down again. Can you not give us a bit of a break? No, it's 45 pound removal fee. What's the score, then, with it? I mean, what, where? You're not exempt, you're parked illegally on private land. Well, may I have an emergency off. call any time? Well, that's your problem, not mine. No, I think it should be your problem. Because right, we the might have an emergency. Hi, but I mean, you know what it's no, like around here. Before. I've clamped an ambulance before through the same company. But earlier this year, you've guessed it, ambulances parked on King's College Hospital grounds found themselves clamped. The hospital was keen to point out that they were patient transfer vehicles and not emergency ambulances. 
They said that the designated disabled bays and drop-off points had to be kept clear for patients and that they only clamped as a last resort. With more cars on the road, it's becoming harder and harder to find somewhere to park. So it's easy to understand why places like fast food restaurants want to keep their car parks free for use by genuine diners. But sometimes customers can find the rules being applied a little too rigorously. Eleven years ago, we highlighted what happened to one McDonald's customer. Went to get some money from Lloyd's Bank cash point to pay for the McDonald's. Came back in again to McDonald's, queued up, bought a meal. That's when we went outside, found the car had been clamped. McDonald's soon stopped clamping at this Felton restaurant and gave Karen and Michelle their money back. And oh, how things change, or possibly not. Fast forward to earlier this year. I parked my vehicle in the car park. Uh, my sister was in the car at the time. I left the car unlocked, ran across the road to get some money from the cash point. 11 years on, a different branch of McDonald's, but a strangely familiar story. By the time I returned, a matter of a couple of minutes, I jumped in the car, about to, uh, to go off to, to buy uh, something in the restaurant when I had a tap on the window to say that the vehicle had been clamped. Tony Martino paid a high price for the Big Mac he never managed to purchase. £95 clamp release fee and a £5 charge for using his debit card. It was unscrupulous, very opportunistic. I, was, I couldn't believe that uh, McDonald's would even employ uh, companies that would operate in this way. As back in 1997, McDonald's say that they need to keep their car parks clear for customer parking. And once again, after coming to us with his clumping nightmare, Tony has been offered his money back. Well, motorists shouldn't park where they want to park, when they want to park, like that. They should follow regulations. But the problem with clamping on private land, it's not about parking enforcement. Most of these companies are in it just to make money. And you can see that by the charges, by the tow-away fees, by the other extortionate fees. So basically, it's a rip-off. It's not about enforcement. It's this belief, and the thought of clampers hiding out just to catch them, that motorists hate. Back in 1997, we exposed one firm who were reputedly the fastest clampers in the West, of Yorkshire. Last Thursday, we went to the same car park to see what might happen. It took just 45 seconds for the clampers to spring into action from a nearby car. How much is it? It's £95, the tolls are there. And if your car's here for over an hour, it's £225. If the toll truck gets called before you've paid, within the hour, it's £40 plus VAT for the toll truck to come out. We refused to pay the full fee demanded. Our clamper said she'd phone head office to try to get them to accept a lower rate. But she didn't realise we were secretly recording her every move. No phone call was ever made. So it's all out, they'll oh, cancel toll oh, to front of us oh, over there. So you'll take the 50. Well, Brilliant. But remember, the government had a cunning plan to get the industry under control. The white paper on the private security industry, wheel campers to be licensed, and statutory regulations are codes of practice. Despite the new regulations, one concern is that it's not only clampers that are too quick off the blocks. It's now the towers, who sometimes also seem faster than Olympic sprinters after the starting gun has gone off. Towing cars is increasingly big business and it's easy to see why. The companies clamp your car and then charge you to take it off before they tow it away, which they also charge you for. And if you can't stump up the cash to get your car out of the pound immediately, you can add storage charges onto that as well. All this means that some drivers have paid up to £400 to get their cars back.